everybody, this is Jack Dennison. Welcome to our Jack Dennis Life Show channel here on YouTube. Uh, we're going to start on some really fun stuff coming up. Uh, Brian Chant, who's from the capital of British Columbia, has been known for over 30 years. He's been involved with uh, still water fishing. I've had a chance to fish with him. I've had a chance to be uh, in many places and lectures. I agree intricacies of having to fish those are the same thing with coronamids. Maybe even more because the depth is such important. But we're going to produce, uh, well we already produced, but we're going to show you uh, Brian Chan's uh, fly tying and uh, uh, technique tape that he uses with his flies. Uh, we're going to go through each fly. Uh, and uh, they'll be there for you to uh, tie from and get to know Brian. Brian, uh, uh, we've re really, really had some fun fun times together and caught a lot of big fish. Anyway, Brian will, will explain this. I'll be with him, and we're, we're going to have a lot of fun. Uh, we might mention to you, uh, by the way, he and Phil Rowley's tapes were probably some of my biggest selling uh, DVDs. And I put together uh, on eBay uh, 12 the, uh, Stillwater tapes for $20. It's amazing. There's some people maybe you never heard of. Denny Richards is in there. Uh, uh, Kelly uh, Gallup. Just a lot of people that are involved with Stillwater. Some Canadians that maybe you haven't heard of. But uh, if you want to keep these, I know you can get it off my channel. But if you want to keep these for prosperity, you'll always have them. You don't have to worry about downloads, and it'll be right there. This is essentially what it cost me to produce those. But I want to have them in your hands. Uh, one of the big things that I do is work as uh, volunteer as soon as this pandemic's over, back with uh, Project Healing Water. I've got books and DVDs. This will help. Anyway, thank you very much, and on with Brian Chan. Well, this last pattern that you're going to tie brings back a lot of memories because uh, Mr. Cat is Gary LaFontaine, and I know that you knew Gary, and we miss him a lot. Absolutely. And he taught us a different way of looking at caddis. In fact, he made caddis, I think, as a fly fisherman's uh, fly. They were always kind of the back seat of the bus when Gary kind of pushed them forward. They're such an intricate part of our fishing, and, and, and they're on lakes, aren't they? Absolutely. Um, there's, there's numerous species of caddis uh, on lakes, and uh, this particular pattern, the Stillwater Caddis pupa, it imitates the, the bigger species of Limnophilidae, the case builders you see in lakes. And um, while a lot of anglers associate caddis with instant or fast action on the surface, there's a lot more trout eating the pupa because it's a lot safer to eat them at 12, 15 feet than sticking their nose up and getting, right. uh, getting attacked by an osprey or another predator. And I think too, once they hit the waters, we all know they leave and they leave in a hurry. That's right. And the only time that you're gonna encounter them again is when they come back to lay their eggs in the water. And many times, that's at night. That's right. Exactly. Or late in the evening, and we're gone. <laughs> Most of us are gone. <laughs> Not all of us, I like to fish at night. but. But in, 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 in the case, too, they're dead, they're flat on the water, and they're hard to see. But this is a great thing, and you can use this with a combination of, of uh, two fly systems and all kinds of ways to fish a caddis pupa. Absolutely, yeah. They're, they, they're very active swimmers when they swim up through the water column in a lake, and uh, so they expose themselves for a fair length of time, and, uh, and again, subsurface. Well, let's take a look at the last fly, uh, a stillwater caddis pupa. Sounds great. Some of the best dry fly fishing you'll have on still waters 
are when the caddis flies are emerging or hatching. Prior to that though, the pupa are swimming quickly to the surface of the lake. And it's in that stage that the trout really do gorge on them because it's safer for the trout to feed deeper in the water column on the pupa than it is to expose themselves to predators when they're near the surface of the lake. So I'm gonna show you how to tie the Stillwater Caddis pupa. It represents the largest of the caddis that we see in Western Stillwaters, the Limnophilidae. You just have to vary the size and coloration to match the caddis pupa that you find in your local Stillwaters. We're gonna start off with a number 10 3X long shanked streamer hook. I'm using six aught dark brown tying thread. I formed a base on the shank of the hook. The body of this fly is going to be Stillwater Solutions dark olive soft blend dubbing material. The rib of this fly is going to be Stillwater Solutions mid stretch floss in the Chiavra's green coloration. So I'm going to start tying the fly by first of all tying in our, our mid stretch floss ribbing of the Chiavra's green. That's a very prominent rib that coloration you'll see through, through the large Limnophilidae caddis we'll find in our waters. I'm then going to put a, um, a bit of dubbing wax on the thread. And I'm going to take the dark olive soft blend and put some dubbing onto the thread. So now we're going to take the dubbing and we're going to build a bit of a tapered body. Up to the thorax area of the fly. Spread, thin it out a little bit here. And that's the beauty of working with this soft blend. You can, you can make it thicker or thinner just by, uh, it's a soft material, just by pulling at it. and you get the taper, desired taper you want. So now we've got the, the body of the fly done. Just trim off the excess. And we're gonna take our ribbing now and wind it through the body. Again, a very prominent rib that you'll see in, in a lot of uh, caddis in lake dwelling species. And we're gonna tie in some legs using some, just some uh, ring neck pheasant rump fibers. Caddis have elongated pair of hind legs, feathered, almost paddle shaped and they can really swim quickly through the water. And so we wanna, we wanna be able to imitate those legs. And they're gonna be fairly long, they're about the length. They're gonna extend just past the, uh, the bend of the hook. I'm gonna pull some fibers off the rump feather again and apply them to the other side of the fly. Like so, and then we can uh, trim the butt sections off now. Now we're gonna to the um, shell back now is light olive dyed uh, pheasant tail as well. And this is another Stillwater Solutions uh, product. I'm going to take some of those, and trim those off the feather. And this is going to form the shell back on top like that. And then eventually we'll pull that over to finish the fly off. Just want to get, make sure I got the right distance. There we go. Now we're going to put a little bit of uh, peacock curl on to form a thorax.
like so. And then I'm going to take a little bit of, uh, so this diamond wing fiber we'll use as a throat. And why we want that in there is to imitate a little bit of a gas bubble as uh, the, the, these pupa as they're swimming up through the water column are also trapping a bit of air just just uh, like the chironomids do or midges do to help them pop out when they get to the surface of the lake. So this is just going to add a little bit of flash. We don't need too much. So. Want that just right under there. There we go. We'll tie that off. And then we're going to grab all our shell back fibers. Pull that over. Finish the fly off. So, and then I'm just going to add uh, just peacock, just another peacock curl to finish the head off, and that'll do it. So we're going to be fishing this fly, ideally uh, with either floating lines and a long leader. Remember, the people are swimming on about a 20 degree angle to the surface of the lake. So floating line, but even better will be the intermediate or slow sinking line, where you allow the fly to sink close to the bottom by doing the countdown method, and then strip, stripping it back in in six to eight inch, fairly quick strips right, right up to the surface of the lake. And that's what these real, that's how the real insects are swimming through the water. Here, we got a bit of a head. And I'll just finish the fly off and with a whip finish. So, and then we're just going to make sure we've got everything looking good here. Trim off a little bit too long on the throat there. And there we have the finished Stillwater Caddis pupa. And we'll just have a look at it, give you an idea of body proportions. And there we go. Caddisflies or sedges provide some of the greatest dry fly fishing you'll find in still waters. It's those big caddis that the pupa swims up to the surface of the lake, the adult crawls out of the shock, scampers across the surface of the water, and you get these explosive strikes from really aggressively feeding fish. So we can get some great dry fly fishing with adult caddis patterns using things like Goddard sedges, Picolec sedges, Tom Thumbs, patterns like that. What's more important though is to have a good pupil pattern, the caddis pupil pattern, the pupa that's swimming from the bottom of the lake to the surface lake to hatch. That's why we tied the stillwater caddis. The mature caddis pupa breaks out of the old caddis larvae tube at the bottom of the of the lake that's, that's been sitting at the bottom of the shoal or the littoral zone, breaks out of that tube or the old case and then quickly swims to the surface of the lake. We want to imitate that swim with like an intermediate or slow sinking line, casting out as far as we can, letting the caddis pupil pattern sink to the bottom and then we're doing four to eight inch fairly quick strip retrieves bringing that fly right to the surface of the lake. We can also use a full floating line, a long leader, and a caddis pupa pattern and imitate that same retrieve up through the water column. So I'm just gonna make a cast out here and I'm gonna demonstrate the retrieve. We've cast out with our clear intermediate sinking line waiting for the line to sig down to the bottom of the shoal. Once we get down there, we're going to be doing these nice, steady, four to eight inch strips. And that's how fast the real pupa is swimming to the surface of the lake.
I'd like to review some of the more common mistakes that I've seen being made by the beginner stillwater fly fisher. First of all, stillwater fly fishing, because we're fishing water that isn't moving, we don't know where those fish are living, and it requires a lot more patience to, to think about what you're doing and how you're representing those flies. The fish have a lot of time to see those flies. It's not as if they're zipping by in the current. So we have to pay particular attention on how we provide the lifelike movement to the flies that we're fishing. Most of these flies, or most of the food sources of trout in still waters, swim fairly slowly or don't even swim at all. So you have to have the patience to slow your retrieves down. There's no point in doing 12 to 20 inch fast strips when you're trying to imitate a chronomid pupa. That's not how they swim, and you're going to be unsuccessful. So you need patience. Secondly, when you're fishing out of a boat, or even out of a pontoon boat, you want to make sure you have complete control over your retrieves. That means double anchoring, a bow out, an anchor out the bow, an anchor out the stern. That way, the, when the wind shifts direction, your boat's not going to move, and you're going to maintain control of your retrieves. Third, a very common mistake we see is that even before you get out on the water, take 30 seconds to a minute to straighten out your monofilament leader. Get the coil, get the memory out of the butt section of your leader so that when you lay a, a cast down, you've got a straight line connection between your fly rod, your fly line, your leader, and your fly. It's very frustrating to be fishing with a slinky or a number of coils in your leader because you're going to get a strike and not even detect it. And fourth, when we're actually doing the fishing situations on the lake, it's much more efficient to be holding your rod tip down on the water. Your rod tip should be within six inches or right in the surface film of the lake, not held up on a 45 degree angle. If you do that, you're going to have a belly in your line and you're going to miss a strike. Again, we want to have a straight line connection as possible between your fly rod, your fly line, your leader and your fly. So keep the tip of your rod right on the water. If you just thought about those four tips there, it would immensely improve your success rate on any waters you plan to fish. Here we are in a lake in Canada. We're not going to tell you where this lake is, but I'm with two legends of stillwater fly fishing here in Canada. We got Phil Rowley and of course my old friend Brian Chan. And they want to tell you a little bit about some materials that you guys developed. Just a few years ago Superfly asked Brian and I if we'd be interested in developing a line of materials specifically aimed at the challenges of still waters. As a fly tire I don't tie a lot of still water patterns but I use a lot of dubbings that require uh, reflective materials and I believe in reflective materials that uh, uh, project color and I know as a biologist uh, Brian you really feel color is very important still water. Absolutely and, and that's what Phil and I worked on was the right uh, a core of right colors that we felt represented the majority of uh, aquatic invertebrates that uh, that trout and other fish species in still waters uh, feed on. Now you blended natural uh, dubbings, you blended synthetic dubbings and you added a lot of uh, flash to it. Brian and I started with six core colors. Olive, light olive, olive dun, tan, calabatus, and brown. And those colors are common through all of the line. And then within the line, we added specific colors that were favorites for the different materials that we like to use. So we have those colors in the sparkle blend dubbings, mid-stretch floss, maraboos, grizzly maraboos, um, other materials within the line like that. And together, to date, we've got 135 different products within the line that represent all of those colors and all of those great colors for tying still water flies. Well, you've seen both of them on the DVD. You've seen them use the materials, pick up some of the still water solutions, and you can create some of your own patterns with these great colors. It's all from Superfly of Canada. And I might say, they create a lot of neat things up here in the far north. <laughs>
You know, as a fly fisherman travels the world, there's nothing better after a hard day of fishing, even when it's a day like today where it's a little bit cool, to go back to a great place and relax. And I'll tell you, I'm here in Southern Alberta, we discovered a really wonderful place, Elk Water Lake Lodge. It's settled in right in the mountains here, and it, it's just a beautiful place so you can hang your hat and get ready for some great fishing here on the lakes of Southern Alberta. We've caught some big fish, and it's been a wonderful experience. And the folks uh, at the Elkwater Lake Lodge have really made our stay terrific. So if you're thinking about coming after these big fish, you want to stay in a really nice place, that's the place to stay. You can find out more information about it right here on this website. You want to visit Southern Alberta, because I can guarantee you there's some big fish here. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this production. We're in the uh, great province of Alberta, Canada, and as you can see, the lake fishing has been terrific. We're in the Cypress Hills area, beautiful lodge, great accommodations, beautiful fishing. Alberta is the big west, and I hope you get a chance to visit it like I have. Whether you enjoy fly fishing or just casting a lure or just beautiful scenery, Alberta's got it all. And to find out more about it, check out this website, Discover Alberta. Alberta's got it all.